Hi, this is Seher from Easy Peasy, and the topic we are going to discuss today is called chromosomes and DNA packaging. So let's start. Now, as we know that a single human cell contains 46 chromosomes in it, you can see in the picture, or 23 pair of chromosomes in it. Now, if you take the DNA of all these chromosomes and join them from end to end, and make it a long strand, and then measure it, you can see that they are approximately 1.8 meters in length. And if you take the diameter of the nucleus in which all these chromosomes are present, you can see that the diameter of each nucleus is approximately 2 micrometers in length. Now the question is, how does 1.8 meter DNA fit itself into 2 micrometer of a space? It is just like you are fitting an elephant in a refrigerator, right? So let's see. I'm taking one chromosome from it, and then I will unwrap it and see how DNA is fitting itself in one single chromosome. So this is the chromosome I'm taking, and when I unwind it, I find out that they are made up of supercoils. And all these supercoils have repetitive units there called nucleosome. And within this nucleosome, you have specific proteins called histone proteins, and they are wrapped around by DNA double helix twicely. Now I'm taking this nucleosome, and I'll take a closer look at that, that how they are wrapping around themselves, right? So this is the nucleosome I'm taking. And when I take a closer look at that, I find out that there are eight histone proteins present in a single nucleosome. So let's count. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So yes, we do have eight histone proteins in a single nucleosome. Now, the specific histone proteins that is present in this nucleosome are H2A, H2B, H3, and H4. And they are present in the form of a pair, like 2H2A, 2H2B, 2H3, and 2H4 histones there. And these proteins are called as core proteins. Fine? Now, if you take a closer look at the amino acid that is present inside these histone proteins, you will find out that they have high content of lysine and arginine there. And as we know, these amino acids provide positive charge to a protein, so that's why histone proteins have slightly positive charge on it. Now, DNA, if you look at the structure of nucleotide that is present inside that DNA, if you didn't, you can see my other videos that is telling about the structure of DNA in more detail. So if you look at the DNA structure, you will find out that DNA backbone have phosphate groups in it, and they have negative charge in it. So DNA have a negative charge, and histone proteins have positive charge. That's how they are tightly compacting or coiling upon each other because they have opposite charge that are attracting to each other, right? Okay, now we have the linker DNA there that is linking the two nucleosomes together or multiple nucleosomes together. And the helper protein that is helping this linker DNA is H1 protein. So H1 protein is not present in core proteins. They are just a helper protein and they are linked with the linker DNA. Okay. Now let's see that the cell is not present in one state. It can divide, right? So within the process of division, the chromosomes or DNA are taking a lot of different shapes. These core proteins come in handy at that time, and these core proteins have covalent post-translation modifications there that is making or helping these changes to occur. What kind of post-translation modifications are there on histone proteins? They can be methylation, phosphorylation, acetylation, ubiquitylation, and simulation. I will discuss these post-translation modifications in detail in my next video. Right now, I'm just going to sum it up that with these 
uh, post translation modifications, these core proteins can make changes in gene expression without making any change in the nucleotides, okay, or without making any mutations. What kind of change is made there, or what kind of modification of gene expressions are there? They can activate or deactivate the transcriptional process. They can help in chromosome packaging. They can also help in DNA damage and repair system. And this uh, phenomena of making change in gene expressions without making any change in the nucleotide, this phenomena is called as epigenetics. Okay, now let's wrap it up and see how DNA is packing itself. So DNA double helix structure, if you just unwind it, it is approximately 1.8 meters long. But once they are coiling upon histone proteins there and make a unit called nucleosome, they will have a diameter of 11 nanometer. Now, with the help of linker DNA, they are making more coils there, and now they are called as chromatosomes. Now, these chromatosomes makes a pair of six, and then they are coiling upon itself and make solenoids there. Now, these solenoids then make a 30 nanometer fiber. Now, up till here, there are other kind of proteins that is going to help in more coiling or super coiling here. And the loops which are compressed and folded around the protein scaffold now are 200 nanometers and we can call it chromatin. Okay, so these chromatin is present in this state if it's not dividing. But once it's going to divide, it's going to make chromosome. So more coiling upon there and then this chromosome's diameter is about 700 nanometer. So that's how DNA wrap around itself and fits into the tiny nucleus there. Thank you very much. If you like this video, please hit the button like and please subscribe my channel. Thank you. Bye-bye.